So that's taking it wrongly. Actually, uh, they should be fast. So in our spiritual cultivation, we should be stable and constant. Like Grandmaster can gain enlightenment and can see the Buddha nature. It's because I uh, am prompt and stable. I don't procrastinate. There are many true Buddha disciples who have taken refuge for a long time. And then, only then, after they ask, who is my personal deity? Who is my Dharma protector? So you have not even started that practices. And still many people that have not practiced the root guru yoga, or even the four fundamental or four plenary yoga. So you need to be prompt. You need to finish your four preliminaries or fundamental practices. And if your foundation is strong, then you would uh, be swift in your root guru yoga. And once you gain spiritual response in your root guru yoga, you would be able to gain response in your personal deity practices. And afterwards, the Dharma protector practice because the Dharma protector follows the personal deity and then they follow the root guru. So as soon as you gain spiritual response in the four fundamental practices, then the root guru yoga uh, will follow soon. So that means you did not build strong foundation. I'm not talking about the masters here. Someone, some who, who has become masters do not want to become masters anymore. That means the masters do not have spiritual response. Or masters who have abandoned their positions, of course, that's because they don't have spiritual response in the root guru yoga because they, they cannot become a true master. They do not perform to their responsibility. That means they do not have spiritual response. So the fundamental practices is very, are very important. Not like in buying the soy milk, uh, you're still wearing shoes. What's important here? Why, don't, why doesn't one take refuge in one's own Buddha because he had not recognized his own Buddha nature. He had not seen his own Buddha nature. Or he had not confirmed his own Buddha nature. If you are truly enlightened, if you truly see the Buddha nature, of course you would take refuge in your own Buddha nature. And if you don't, that means the realm of your spiritual cultivation is not sufficient. There's nowhere else to take. If you don't take refuge in your own Buddha, then there is no place you can rely on. Once you gain spiritual response, then your commitment to spiritual cultivation will be strong. Once you gain enlightenment, then you would know what is what self-refuge is, or taking refuge in oneself. Once you see the Buddha nature, then you can take refuge in oneself, or you can take the self-refuge. And if you can't do that, then there's nowhere else to rely upon. You cannot rely. So in self-refuge, in taking refuge in one's own Buddha, doesn't mean it's, it does not mean it's arrogance that I'm the only one. When Buddha Sakyamuni said that I'm the one, that means because he's already 
gain enlightenment and see the Buddha nature, so he can say that he is the one. I am the only precious one. That means when you take refuge in yourself, in your own Buddha nature, then you are the only precious one. It doesn't mean that you are the di di dictator or that uh, you are but because you have realized your Buddhahood, you have seen the Buddha nature, then you're the most precious one. So the I here is not the physical I, but I refers to the Buddha nature. So please do not take it wrongly. So it's not about power. There's a country uh, and there is a new policeman who went to the theater and uh, the ticket, uh, the person who checked the tickets said that you must be a new policeman and the new policeman asked uh, you must be new and the, the policeman said how do you know I'm new because the policeman never buy tickets you must be new because you bought ticket. Because uh, they are very self-confident. The policeman usually just walk, walk through it, walk inside without tickets. So the person who checked for tickets knew. You know, uh, you must be new because you sit here with the people, because uh, the senior policemen, they all sit uh, at the VIP seats. Because they feel they have power, they just go directly uh, to the balconies. And then, uh, sitting on the balcony, uh, he had to go to the bathroom and he asked, uh, where is the toilet? And the person next to him, you must be a new policeman. How do you know I'm new? And that only the new policeman, uh, the, the old policeman would just release themselves right there. Uh, they would just uh, pee from, from above. They don't need to find toilets. So the new policeman said, oh, is, is that how it is? And the policeman was so powerful, so he did it. And uh, when he did, that uh, the person who, who got wet said, you must be a new policeman. And the new policeman said again, how do you know? And he said, you know, the old policeman would spray all over, not just to one person, would spray the urine all over. So that's the, the arrogance of of the policeman. So I'm thinking here that in the future for the empowerments, we can make it easy. <laughs> Just buy me a water gun and I, I would spray them like this. Maybe that would be faster. <laughs> 